Uh, I've got to uh, be realistic and say that I am uh, a great uh, misgivings about uh, this game from an Australian point of view. I believe that this England side are G'd up for a magnificent effort and uh, I like the amount of experience they've got in the team with particular reference to George Nichols and Steve Norton. Australia kick off and Fairburn's got possession. And in they go and there's Fulton showing little trouble and they drive him back eight metres right to the quarter line. Well, Fulton certainly didn't tackle then like a man who's uh, got uh, stomach trouble. A strong, hard run there from uh, George Nichols from St Helens, who's uh, uh, not unknown to Australian players. The prematurely bald Thompson getting up, and uh, we've got some kicking there as a penalty. Penalty, quite rightly, to Australia, and I uh, agree totally with that. Jimmy Thompson lashing out with his feet in the tackle. That's for the referee to adjudicate on uh, things like that. Not the players to resent being held in a tackle. And uh, I hope the referee is consistent with that particular ruling throughout. Uh, the same should apply to Australians throughout the game too. First opportunity then for Mick Cronin to raise the flags for Australia. This is uh, about two metres outside the 10 metre line. So it's about uh, 35 metres out. And he's about 20 metres off centre. Quite a buzz going round the ground here, which uh, crowd, as I mentioned and repeat, has built up dramatically in the last quarter of an hour. Now, for those that may be a little confused, the numbering of the forwards in international matches in England, the lock forwards are numbered 13, the second row is 11 and 12, the props 8 and 10, the hookers are number 9. Well, they're already giving an indication, this English crowd, of... Uh, where their uh, loyalties lie. Cronin. It's not there, it's too short. Fairburn has it. In came Kerry Burstead very strongly. And he's uh, stolen the ball from him. Australia on attack now. Olling, number eight, taking the ball up. A mighty solid defence here at uh, Central Park. Krilich, Craig Young coming hard and on the burst. They're only about 10 metres away now. Jeff Gerrard going from dummy half. He's only about five metres away. Radonikas with a long pass out to Reddy, standing wide. Goes under a high tackle, loses the ball. Kicks it backwards. Radonikas scoops it. It's uh, been knocked back. Uh, the referee didn't give a clear signal to me that the tackle count uh, resumed. There's Fulton with a bomb. The bomb's gone high. Fairburn's flying for it. Knocks it forward. It's a penalty to Australia. I think his signal indicated offside play. Yes, it does. Millwood was the man who questioned, who touched the ball in an offside position. Now this uh, would indicate uh, that the referee is uh, going to be, well, he was very, very close to the action on that occasion. He was right beside the man Fairburn who stood under the bomb. And I've got to say, Barry, he didn't make a terrific fist of catching that one. No, he flew very high, but he didn't get to the ball very clearly at all. Well, he flew high, but his arms weren't up to receive the ball. I think it was uh, a little bit of a negative jump, that one. He was uh, a little bit concerned about his well-being, and who am I sitting in a safe commentary position to, to argue with that? He was under a certain amount of pressure. I think this is going to be a very close, tight, hard game, and uh, I think this England side... Uh, they're going to take a power of beating. Cronin's kick is successful, so first one, Australia lead, 2-0. Not a stiff arm tackle, took him around the shoulders. England moving the ball wide now, they've left it behind, it's a knock on that. Offside again, that's directly in front, and the referee is quite right. The uh, England player dropped it forward, another England player fell on the ball in an offside position. Well, no Australian fan can complain about the uh, handling of the game to this point by the referee, Barry. He's 4-0 in the penalties, is that correct? Yes, that's right. Very common at this stage, isn't he? Well, we could almost bottle him and take him back to Australia the way he's going. <coughs> but uh, the game's played over 80 minutes. From midfield. Mick Cronin successful with one from two. These sort of kicks 
crown and kicked by the bucket fall last year or last season in Sydney. Directly in front. Strikes that hard and high. Another two points. Australia lead by four points to nil. I get the impression that may have been a gigantic uh, con job. And Craig Young has been penalised for failing to get away from the tackle player. George Nichols and another opportunity. Millwood says Fairburn have another go. I just get the impression that uh, this referee does tend to uh, respond to the roar of the crowd. Barry? Yes, it seemed that way in the last two penalties he's given to uh, Great Britain. It's a very excitable crowd too, Rex. There's a lot of atmosphere here and they're very keen for England to win this game. Well, they'd be funny Englishmen if they weren't. Here's that incident involving the last penalty. Craig Young not allowing uh, Nichols to get to his feet. And uh, I'm just quite happy about the uh, refereeing at this stage that uh, the referee's being eminently consistent in everything he's done so far. Fairburn around the corner type of kicker like John Gray. Goes back three long paces and a pace to the left. Comes in and hits it with the instep with the right boot. And that one's got height, but distance, got everything. That's two magnificent points for Fairburn. And a little tiny knock on. Fulton shows he's disgust on that occasion. Not keeping the possession for lengthy periods, Australia. They're uh, getting away with. Uh, there's a penalty. It's against a Radonica speed. I think that clearly indicates what the referee thought of that. Well, Australia have lost possession on the first and second tackle on the last two sequences, and uh, that's not good enough in a test match. They've got to settle the player down. I think the fact that there are nine, am I right, Barry, players in this side playing against England for the first time? Eight, Rex. Eight. Well, uh, is contributing probably to some of the nervousness we're seeing by some of these young men. Yes, I think they'll be chasing the ball quite a lot this afternoon too. They've got to hold that ball for the six tackles, as you say. Well, there's the man that's got to uh, plant that idea in their head, Bobby Fulton, their skipper. George Fairburn, who's already been successful with one from two, and the one that he kicked was a superb one. This is considerably shorter. A metre outside the quarter and a metre inside the 10 metre line from the sideline. Around the corner. Another great goal from the sideline to George Fairburn and the score then. After uh, about 18 and a half minutes of play. Great Britain four. Australia for five minutes to go for all the score on either side and a penalty against Rodonicus who I must truthfully say has looked as though he could have been penalized every time he's put the ball in a scrum today has finally penalized and the statistics are Barry the scrums at this stage favor Great Britain six to four and the penalties are now seven five Australia's way Neither side looking as though they're going to uh, assert any supremacy in this game. The handling from both sides has been very, very marginal. And that surprises me more with the Great Britain side than it does with the Australians, who are a young lot. This is a Great Britain side, a very experienced team. Plenty of years in there. And one would have thought they could have kept the ball for lengthier periods. Fairburn, 11 metres inside the Australian half, directly in the middle of the field. He gives the ball an almighty thump when he hits it. Ooh, it's snuck over. That's his worst kick 
but it's worth two points. Didn't go end over end at all, but uh, that's two points. And Great Britain hit the front for the first time, and they've got a lead now of six points to four. Fulton driving the ball deep again, trying to find an open space, which he has done. Well picked up on the run by Fairburn, who doesn't go anywhere on that occasion. It's a Rogers tackle that stops his progress. Elwood. And Casey on the blind side of the ruck towards the quarter line he comes. Ward, the hooker. Just over the quarter. Nash throwing the dummy. He's been dangerous on two notable occasions. Well, Nash came round, and there's a penalty, quite rightly. Nash wheeling around, no doubt we'll see that again. Craig Young got his leg caught in uh, Nash's uh, body on the tackle, and then uh, Nash appeared to lash out and retaliate. Now there's Young, who's got his foot caught. It wasn't a kick attempt, but Nash's was. In the background, big... Uh, Ian Thompson coming on as uh, treating one of the Australian players. There's the offender. Barry Ross, an observation from you. Mick Cronin doesn't appear to be hitting the ball with his customary power. No, no, he's not striking the ball like he did in Parramatta. With, with Parramatta, I should say. I, I noticed before the game, Frank Stanton told him to put the extra long sprigs on. And perhaps Rex, uh, while this may enable him to hold his footing better, Perhaps it's uh, hindering his goal kicking. Well, that's a possibility. It's also a possibility that he's slightly out of form as he has not been kicking goals the last two matches. He's got that one well and truly into the air. It's successful. So all our previous discussion was academic, but frequently when a player is not getting distance with his kicks, it's because he's trying to steer rather than strike the ball hard. And uh, that's the scoreline, six all. And we've only got uh, about half a minute by our time, which is not official time, to go. Till that half-time break, which I'm sure both sides are going to be pretty happy about. Boosted. Diminutive wing three-quarter. Ray Price. Under a head high. Makes a good break. That's a typical Price bit of football. Millwood kicking off. Let's recollect the score is three penalty goals each. Boosted. Tiny little winger with uh, a, a huge, huge heart. Krillich out of Craig Young. And he makes a good bust. That's a good little run. And uh, Australian forwards have got to back each other up in the second half here. Ready. Turns it back inside to Olling. Olling gets towards the edge of the ruck. Norton and knees again from Nichols. This player's going to get himself a serve. Somebody's going to walk up and smack him right in the mouth before the end of this game, and I hope when they do, they make it a good one. Because the referee doesn't appear as though he's going to do anything in the world about the knees he uses from time to time. Edie, the price. Good defence. This Thompson, the uh, balding player in the England side. Radonigas half through the gap, and that's the six. He's so much like an Australian type of player, and he's a model tackler. In 90% of cases, he's right round the shins. Australia in possession from the ensuing scrum. It wasn't a penalty, it wasn't offside play, it was designated a forward pass as such a scrum. Fulton now to Olling. Olling. Still not getting him the ball away as much as he should. He should attempt to unload a little bit more than he does, Graham Olling. Gerard, who's found gaps. Gets it away to Krillich. Even that sort of little bit of interchange of passing breaks the defence up. Craig Young the Fulton. Ready. The dummy. And a pretty pretty good one too. It fooled me. Last tackle coming up with the lights on here at uh, Central Park Wigan. Score six all. Fulton drops for goal. It's a goal. That's a point lead to Australia. They've got it seven points to six, and that was a calculated bit of football by the Australian side. They worked very 
well to a plan to work play into the middle of the field there. Gerard again splitting them up the middle from dummy half. Oh, and Krilic has lost it in the tackle as he fell for it. Bad bit of slack football there. At the halfway. Norton has been by far one of the most uh, dangerous players. There's a touch charge in. It'll be a penalty to the Great Britain side, one would think. And it will be against uh, Ray Price. 7-6 Australia lead. 22 minutes of play in the second half gone. No tries. Fairburn's kick is unsuccessful. It's taken well by Rogers, who evades the first tackle. Evades the second, the third, and that's a good little bit of football by Rogers, let me tell you. Krillich now from dummy half. Had, uh, there he goes. That's the first time he's run, and it's a good run. And Krillich is showing that he's, uh, well, not just a hooker. He can move in the open. Ready. Price coming on the burst nicely, but uh, Reddy gets uh, a bit of a late serve there, and down he goes. Well, it's as messy as you can see when they're trying to get to their feet. Fulton, Gerard, Cronin doing... Oh, that could be a bad one. Bevan kicks, it's a chase now. Edie's after it too. They're going to get to it, Edie's there. Who is it? The referee says a try. I can't tell everybody stood up in front of me. But that was a bad error from Cronin. Bevan got to it as the referee who was 40 yards behind the play, and I don't blame him, they're pretty quick out in the wing. If, as he uh, agrees, it was a try, Cronin's going to have the error sheet at home for him. Now watch it. He tried to quick hand it along without actually catching it. Bevan was able to get his left foot to it. Now the race develops. Edie, the shoulder, and I'll give it as a try. I'll give it as a try. No doubt about it, in my view. Bevan got a hand to it, and all you require is downward pressure. So while I doubted the referee's ability to see it from where he was, in retrospect and looking at it in second sight, that's a try. And it's got to be sheeted home as a terrifying error to the Australian wing, uh, centre three-quarter, Mick Cronin. There it was. One would suggest that from this football that Bevan has played for either Liverpool, Tottenham Hotspur, uh, or whoever else. Now watch the extended left right arm, and I'll give that as a try, uh, quite definitely got a hand of the ball, downward pressure. Barry Ross, any thoughts? Yes, I agree with you, Rex, I think he touched the ball, and then, then once he does that, it is a try. I would love to have seen that on a head-on shot, but we just couldn't manufacture a head-on camera here at short notice. Well there, that's a different ball game, isn't it? Nine points to seven, Great Britain with a kick from Fairburn, well within his capability from eight metres in from the sideline, 22 and a half metres out. No, no, not that way, George. Just wide of a good length. The score remains, nine points to seven. One try to Great Britain and three goals, making up their nine points. Rogers feels that one well. Just inside the quarter now, Australia have got to maintain possession. And they've got to back each other up with the ball. Fulton, Edie coming in, injecting himself into the line. By about uh, 18 metres out now from Great Britain's line. And Gerard again from dummy half. He's made some good inroads in that position today. Filich, Fulton. Ready. Lovely to crowd it out to boost that could go close. He does. And he makes the odd yard, and that's a great bit of play. And a great bit of play. And the Australian jubilantly jumped to their feet as little Boosted goes in and scores a try. And that was a good clean try. Uh, no doubt in the wide world about that one. As the glum looking uh, Great Britain bench there sits and stares. Let's see it again. Here was the play. The pass coming out to Reddy. Reddy on to Cronin, and he did so well that time. And doesn't that great that uh, Cronin's been able to redeem himself from that previous error? A little boost that did so well to take the ball round that extra two metres and make the kick even fractionally easier for Mick Cronin. 
Well, there he is, Vuzdan, the scorer of a good try in there. 29. 29th minute of the second half. And again, Fulton with a long pass out there to Reddy. Reddy selectively to Cronin. Cronin gets it to way to Boosted, who gets outside his man. And uh, I again repeat the, the experience now showing in Boosted to gain that extra couple of metres inward. He may just make the difference with a kick. The score, 10-9. Australia's way, the kick from Cronin is not successful. Cronin's kicking record today. This may be a, another field goal attempt coming up. As Craig Young came on and gave Nichols a nice old shoulder. Knocked him out of the way. Ready. Straight and hard. Only about four metres away on the Australian side. Starting to show real signs of a, a revival now. Fulton. Out to Olling. Got a pass back inside miraculously to Edie. Edie back to Fulton and Fulton going close. And there's Ward. Ward and Edie. And is it a try? Fulton's been allowed a try. Fulton's been allowed a try. The Australian managers, Peter Moore and his co-manager there, are going quite, uh, the Jim Caldwell, going quite ecstatic about the whole business. We'll see that again. The referee took his time to allocate the, uh, the try, but it's one to Bobby Fulton. Now watch as Olling does well here, to get the pass back inside to Edie. Edie goes so close, and then unloads one-handed to Fulton. Now Fulton's strength got him to that position. He still strains and fights, and he gets the ball now, no question about it. And the referee, only three metres to the side, agreed with that. Fulton, I think, has closed the gate on a, uh, an Australian win in this game. The kick from Cronin is not a, a difficult one it's only about 15 meters off center maybe 18 meters off center the score 13 points australia nine points to great britain and i mentioned again that rod reddy has been given the man of the match award Cronin. he's made though no, no doubt about that one 